let's start this Wilton Bullet Vice restoration. Uh, it's really not going to need much. It's in pretty damn good shape. But uh, first thing I'm going to do is, as you remember in the last Wilton Vice video, uh, my friend Chuck Bomarino uh, gave me a freeze plug for the tail cap. So that was pretty considerate. So let's pop that guy off first and then we'll take the front jaw out and go from there. Hopefully we don't have any stripped out screws or, uh, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Let's get to it. I want to thank everyone for all your suggestions on finishes and colors and all that stuff. Oh, well, it looks like it's banged in there. Let me grab something. Let me grab something to get it open. It looks like he tapped it in, I guess. All right, be right back. All right, let's see if I can get it with this. I'm putting it in this. Oh, there we go. Oh, what the hell is this? <laughs> Jesus, okay. Uh, I'll explain what this is all about here. So when Chuck uh, found this vice for me, um, he went and picked it up and uh, let me know how much uh, he had to give for it. So I gave him an extra 25 bucks for gas because he drove out of his way um, and picked this thing up and then made arrangements to get it to me. And so I gave him an extra 25 bucks for fuel, you know? It's just, you know, a small gesture. So anyway, I guess, uh, I guess uh, <laughs> I guess Chuck didn't need it, so thanks, buddy, man. Now I really owe you. So anyway, um, I appreciate that, and uh, this will go a long way towards the Wilton Bullet advice. How's that, buddy? Thanks, man. All right, so uh, there's the freeze plug uh, Chuck also gave me. Um, it's a pretty good idea, and the thing almost fits. So um, we might use that. Uh, we might use something else, we're not sure yet. So let me make sure uh, I'm in frame here. So we're gonna take the jaw out. Let me reposition the camera. Hopefully that's a little better. to do this all in frame man I didn't want the camera between my legs so man this thing feels smooth feels like it's in really good shape okay there we go all right Okay, um, the lead screw looks good. Looks like it's well greased, so there's no rust on the inside. Looks like most of the rust is on the outside, which is uh, really good. Okay, here's the, uh, let me get a paper towel, because this is the, here's the key that has the date stamp on it. Let me grab something to wipe that off. Here we go. All you Wilton Vice experts, this has 71 stamped in it. So I don't know if that's the warranty expiration date after five years, or if that's the actual date of the, vi of the vice when it was manufactured. So anyway. Alright. 
screws in good shape. Shit, the head's not even buggered up. That's a good sign already. This one's a little bent, it looks like. It was wobbling around, but no big deal. It was still working. And this is the rear jaw. I'm, look, I'm gonna look for cracks right here because this a lot of these I've seen where this this piece here is broken off and this one looks like it's in great shape. Down inside it that's the nut and of course there's pins right here that hold that nut in. We're gonna have to extract them this way. Okay. That's a rear jaw. Let's pop this front jaw off. Let's hope we have the same luck here. Okay. Screws do look the same. soft. Um, man, these look great. Looks real good. I don't see any cracks. Everything looks good so far, man. I'm very happy with this so far. Okay, let's pull off the uh, horseshoe. Let's see how this fits in here. Okay. Man, so far everything's Coming out pretty easy. I'm really happy with that. Yeah, these look like the original screws. Um, from what I understand, if they have a small head like that, it's the original uh, Wilton screw. The other one looks pretty good. So far, so good. Ray is a happy camper, man. They look fantastic. Okay. The retaining ring is in great shape. It's covered in grease, so that's probably why it's not rusted. Look at all that grease on there. That's why there's no rust inside. Excellent. Excellent. The screw's in good shape. Real good shape. Okay, the only thing left to do, let's see. I'm not pulling the key out, I'm gonna leave the key. I don't wanna pull that guy out. I just wanna clean everything up real good. Uh, let's get this 
back here. We need to pop uh, these pins out. So I'm going to hit this on the wire wheel real quick. Might not even have to. <laughs> And then I'll, I'll get set up to get these things out. Um, I don't want to knock them through. I don't want to knock them through. I want to take them out. So uh, let me cut and get set up for that. And we'll be right back. I'm going to douse these parts with some WD-40. Let them soak in that. I'm using WD because that's all I got. <laughs> All my stuff is still pretty much packed up from the move. Um, I didn't want to unpack it twice, plus I have no room in here for any of it. So we'll let all that stuff sit in there. We're gonna use the fine wire brush on it all, so. All right, Chuck, we're gonna throw you in there too. There you go. You can join the party. Okay, uh, I need to go put that fine wire wheel on my wheel. So I have a nice, fresh, fine wheel. I'm not sure which one's on there. I need to go check, because I, I don't want to hit this with a coarse wire wheel. So let me go check and be right back. Okay, the wheel that was on my uh, little uh, bow door was a fine wheel. So I just hit it real quick. There's one pin. And there's the other one. Okay, so let me get set up and figure out how I'm going to... Some kind of angle device to get in there and pop it out. So uh, let me see what I got in the toolbox and I'll be back. Alright, here's what I came up with. Um, I'm going to try, here I'll bring this in, I'm going to try to go in here with an Allen wrench and get down in that hole and try to pry it, pry it um, by tapping on this. In turn, I'm hoping that it'll start pushing that pin out to where I can grab it. Um, I also wanted to point out the only damage on this vise that I can find so far is right here. It looks like somebody hit it with a grinder, and I believe they probably hit it with a grinder to remove the dust cap, not knowing you had to take the jaw out. Um, that's my thoughts anyway. So uh, let me get um, let me get a hammer, and let's see if we can knock those pins out. Looks like I'm lined up with the pin. Okay, that's a shitty Allen wrench and it just bent. So I'm gonna have to get a little better quality one, I believe. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in the hole, but it's just, it's just bending. And that thing hasn't budged yet, okay. Uh, let me cut. I'll be right back. I'll get a better one. Okay, I got another one. There's no name on it, so it could be another piece of shit. Who knows? Okay. I don't even know if this is going to work. Because I, I really don't want to bang them through. Feels like I'm... I'm on the back of the pin, but oh, this one, this side, it's it's sticking through a little bit, just a tiny bit. Let me see if I can get on top of it. Well, I 
at least the wrench didn't bend. Yeah, it looks like those pins are, are just, just poking through a little bit. Yeah, it looks like it's going to slip over top of it. Well guys, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just monkey with it for a while until I start getting it to move and then I'll bring you back. Hey, check it out. I just been messing with it and it finally just poked out a little bit. Okay, so now I need to get something to back up back up the wrench because now it's it's in the hole and I don't have any lever action here anymore so uh, let me grab something to back it up with oh yeah check it out it's coming sweet oh bent the wrench a little bit Better persuade that right back in. Uh, let's see, I need to, you know, I'm just gonna get a longer Allen wrench. Good thing I got plenty of these. This one's a little buggered up on the end, so it would be perfect, and it's a little bit longer. So. Oh yeah, look at that, it's coming. Sweet. Can't see down in that hole. Okay, a little bit longer Allen wrench. Be right back. Okay, I don't have a longer one, so I just uh, bent this one a little bit. So let's see if it'll, it's enough to knock her out. Because it's got a, a tighter angle now. Shit, now I can't get it in the hole. Great, I bent it too far. Oop, wait a minute. Almost. Come on, baby. Get in that hole. Oh yeah, it's in there. Okay. Here we go. It's coming out this time, right guys? It's moving. It's moving and I bent it again so now it's weak. <laughs> I'm going to need to back it up with something now I think. Got to get it in the hole again. The casting's a little rough in there so it doesn't slip too easy. There we go. All right, I'm going to have to try to back back this up. Let me back it up with something. 
Not sure what yet. Cause I gotta get it, I gotta get it at the pivot point down there. Okay, let's try a screwdriver, a beater. See if we can get that down in there. I think I need something with a smaller head. Oh, look at that. There we go. Look at that. I win. Come on, focus. There it is. See the knurling on it? I'm going to try to preserve that. Okay, one out, and I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to put this in a Ziploc bag and label which side it came out of. So let me cut and I'll be right back. There. Now there won't be any confusion. Alright. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but this other one I thought was going to be easier to take out. But let me just try to get the right angle. The um punch does not line up with the pin on the other side. It misses the hole. So hopefully I can get a thinner, thinner one to manipulate it around to get in that hole and then just knock the other pin out. So let me grab another punch. Okay, here's a piece of uh, 3 seconds drill rod. It's the biggest one that I can get through this hole and get it to line up to where it goes into the other, onto the shoulder of the other pin. So let's give that a try. That one's in there tight. No, hasn't budged. Felt like something moved. Let's hope it was this. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. All right, here we go. Looks like our 330 seconds drill rod's working. 
There we go. All right. Yeah. Okay, that baby is out. Thanks to our 330 seconds drill rod. Come on, where are you? There you go. Okay, both pins are out. Let's see if this, all right, it comes right off. Sweet. There's the nut, guys. And there is the only damage on this right here. Okay, let's move to the next step. Oh, there is no next step. It's all apart. <laughs> well, I guess it's time for cleaning. I want to show you this. There's one pinhole, just barely on the edge. Check this one out. <laughs> it's like they missed it completely. Oh well, as long as it holds it in there, I guess that's all that matters. Maybe that's why that one pin was protruding in here. They had it, they had it knock it all the way through for it to hold in, into here. I don't have a blast cabinet. Um, I plan on adding one to the shop once it's built. So this is going to be all wire wheeled. Um, I think it'll come out just fine. And then I have to decide what I want to do with this, uh, this chunk out of here. I don't know if I should just leave it as a natural character or if I should try to silicon bronze weld it or maybe some uh, Loctite uh, putty. I I'm not sure yet. I think that would bother me though just to see that that grinder mark in there. Anyway, I'll figure something out but um, you really don't need to see me wire wheel all this. I mean it's pretty straightforward. Um, so. I'll, I'll get to that right now. And then I was actually thinking about um, putting the base uh, on the milling machine and milling the uh, anvil, even though I will never use this as an anvil. If you could see, this has a WD-40 pouring out of it. Um, this has like a, 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 shit, I don't know what it is. I guess it's a casting mark. So I'm thinking about buzzing this flat right here and then blending this in just for aesthetics. I will never hit on this. Um, I don't even know why Wilton put these on the vise. You shouldn't be beating on these anyway. No, it's only cast iron. So, okay. So I'll wire wheel all this and then uh, we'll bring you back.